people reading this question are not thinking, oh, maybe I should use a number line. Like, it's just not something that would cross your mind typically. It is a mixture question. It's a question that describes mixing together two ratios to produce some midpoint. Hey, this is Avi Gutman with another Ask Me Anything event brought to you by quantreasoning.com. I invite you to join me live next time. We do this every Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern, and you can attend for free by starting your free trial at quantreasoning.com. All right, I suggest we start with algebra. I think that's probably how most people would solve this question. Uh, so what you can do algebraically is just use a scale factor, let's call it x, for uh, that initial ratio. So now we can say the actual number of registered Republicans was 3x, the actual number of registered Democrats was 5x. After the new registrations, we have 3x plus 600, that's how many Republicans we have, and we have 5x plus 500 Democrats. And we are told that this new ratio works out to 4 to 5. Then we do a bit of algebra. So we're going to expand this equation by both denominators. And we're going to end up, if I don't make any careless errors there, we're going to end up with 15x. Actually, I just had a great idea. Why don't we first expand the ratio by a factor of 5, like that. 3x plus 600 equals 4x plus 4. Excuse me, 400. Because this is 100. Yeah, so we're uh, expanding the equation by a factor of x plus 100. And then subtract 3x from both sides and subtract from uh, 400 from both sides. So I found out that the scale factor was 200 for the original ratio. And now that I have the scale factor for the original ratio, I can say that the actual number of Republicans was 600, and the actual number of Democrats was 1,000. And once we add 600 here and 500 here, we get 1,200 and 1,100, excuse me, uh, 1,200 and 1,500 for a difference of 300. So that's the algebraic solution. Can it be done in two minutes? Uh, yes, especially if you think to expand everything by a factor of five. Uh, I think that can save us a lot of time with the algebra there. Um, even without that shortcut, I think it's possible if, you're, uh, if your algebra is strong. So that's, uh, that's what I would consider to be the long way to solve this question. But on our forum, Eric suggested a brilliant shortcut using a number line, of all things. And unlike the previous question, which really lent itself to a number line because it was describing a rope cut into two pieces, this question really doesn't scream number line, I think. Right? You, people reading this question are not thinking, oh, maybe I should use a number line. Like It's just not something that would cross your mind typically. So why is it that we can use a number line to solve this question? Well, we have a mixture of two ratios. We have a ratio of 3 to 5. We're mixing that with a ratio of 600 to 500, or 6 to 5. And then we're ending up with a ratio for the mixture of 4 fifths. So even though this, this question doesn't immediately look like a, a mixture question, it is. A mixture question. It's a question that describes mixing together two ratios to produce some midpoint, some, some ratio that's in between the two ratios that we started out with. And just in case this is helpful, I want you to imagine the following analogous question. Imagine that you work as a, a bouncer at a nightclub and the boss told you to only let people in by a certain ratio of boys to girls, let's say a ratio of three to five. So the, the, the boss said, you need to let boys and girls in by a ratio of three to five. So you're standing there as the bouncer and presumably what you're doing is you're making up groups of eight, right? Three boys, five girls, come in. Three boys, five girls, come in. Three boys, five girls, come in. So you're letting them in group by group. 
And if I ask you how many groups, how many such groups did you let in, the number of groups is the scale factor for those people that you let in. So if you let in 10 groups of eight, your scale factor is 10, and you must have let in 30 boys and 50 girls with that ratio of 3 to 5 with a scale factor of 10. And then suppose at midnight the boss came and said to you, from now on I want you to let them in at a different ratio of, say, 6 to 5. So 6 boys, 5 girls. 6 boys, 5 girls. Okay? And you count the number of groups you let in after midnight, and you find out that it was... 100. What does that mean? It means you let in 600 boys, 500 girls. So I'm making the numbers the same numbers as in the original question with the Republicans and Democrats. Now, assuming nobody has left the nightclub, by closing time, when you have all of those people in there, imagine that you discover that currently at closing, with all of the people that you let in, the ratio of boys to girls is 5 to 4. Excuse me. Uh, four to five, right? We want to make it the same as the original question. It's There's four boys to every five girls. So first of all, does that make sense? Is that even sensible? Is it possible that that's the ratio? Well, you'd want to ask yourself, does that ratio live somewhere in between the two ratios that I've been using all night? Because if it's not somewhere in between them, then, it's, then you must have made a mistake. You must have not counted them correctly. Uh, so it's very similar to... Uh, a question about uh, saline solutions, where you have a 10% salt mixture and a 20% salt mixture, and now you're mixing them all together, you're not going to have a 75% salt mixture at the end of it, you're going to have somewhere in between 10% and 20%. So it's the same concept here. And then you'd say, okay, so where is 5 fourths? Remember, that was the ratio at closing time, the 5 to 4 boys to girls. Where does that sit on the number line between the two ratios that we've been using tonight, the 3 to 5 and the 6 to 5. And you'd say, well, 4 to 5 is closer to 3 to 5 than it is to 6 to 5. I'm going to draw a number line now um, and, and see exactly what that looks like. So let's have a look. So before midnight, you, the bouncer, was letting them, you were letting them in at a ratio of 3 to 5. After midnight, you let them in at a ratio of 6 to 5. And we know that at closing time, it was a ratio of 4 to 5. And why did I put 4 to 5 here, closer to the left side? Well, since the, not, since the denominators are all the same, we could just look at it as 3 and 4 and 6. So you've got a distance of 1 versus a distance of 2. So is it fair to say that the ratio at closing time is twice as close to the pre-midnight ratio as it is to the post-midnight ratio. Is that fair? We've got a ratio of 2 to 1 there. So we could say, um, and now I won't call it pre-midnight and post-midnight because I want to come back to the original question. I'll just call it original to additional, the, the ratio at which they're being added, to ending ratio. So original to additional to ending. And we can say now that the scale factors, the number of groups of people that we let into the nightclub pre-midnight versus post-midnight versus altogether, total number of groups, those scale factors must be 2 to 1 to 3. Why? Because the ending ratio is twice as close to the original as it is to the additional. And that's Republicans to Democrats. Those are the ratios that we're comparing. So, and these are the scale factors. So scale factors have a ratio of 2 to 1 to 3. Now, we know where did the 6 fifths come from? Where did that 6 to 5 come from? It came from here. So we know what the scale factor was for that ratio. For the additional ratio, we know the scale factor was 100 because that's how we got the 6 to 5. We, we took out the scale factor of 100. So that's where that comes from. And what the question is concerned with is the ending point, the, the situation at closing in our nightclub analogy. At closing, what was the difference in numbers? How many more, how many more voters at the end, after, after these registrations? Okay, 
if the scale factor for additional was 100, the scale factor for ending must be 300, because it's three times as big as additional, as you can see in our ratio. And what do we know for, the, for that ratio for the closing time, for the ending? It was, where do we have that? 4 to 5, for a difference of one ratio unit. Why am I talking about the difference of one ratio unit? Because that's what the question was asking about. The question was asking how many more in the denominator do we have compared to the numerator? Well, I have one more ratio unit, but I know my scale factor is 300, so the actual difference was 300, and that's answer choice B. And I'll again ask you as usual, which solution do you prefer, algebra or number line? And feel free to pick different ones depending on whether you're on the test or at home studying. Like if, if, the, if your answer depends on where, let me know in the chat. At the test center, I'd use this one, and at home, I'd use this other one, if you have different answers there. I might not need to find the actual number of Republicans and the actual number of Democrats because they're not asking me to find the actual numbers, they're asking me for the difference between those numbers. And often on the GMAT, it's possible to find the difference between two numbers without actually finding what those numbers are. And that's exactly what I did here. And so that was my shortcut there at the end, using my ratio and using the fact that there's a one ratio unit difference between four and five here. The difference between them is one ratio unit. And I know the scale factor is 300. So I don't actually need to go through the trouble of finding what the actual numbers were. I can go directly to the difference between those numbers because that's all they're asking for. So what you did is perfectly fine, Parash. It's just what I did here is, uh, is like a shortcut that, again, I didn't think of initially, but I thought about it later. Eric says, what if the numbers were uglier on the exam? And what do you think my answer will be? Then it's not a GMAT question. The benefit that the GMAT intends to provide to people who use a number line versus the punishment that the GMAT intends to give people who use algebra, that whole thing would go out the window if the numbers were ugly. So the numbers are what they are. It's funny because I was actually going to say this before I saw your question. I was going to answer it before you even asked it. These numbers worked out beautifully on purpose. In other words, they were chosen that way. It's, it's not like we got lucky that the denominators were all the same. You know, 3 to 5, 4 to 5, 6 to 5, oh, what, you know, how lucky were we that all the denominators were the same? No, it's not luck, it's by design. And the reason to design it that way is exactly what we were talking about with NG earlier today. So I'm, I'm glad you asked that, Eric. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.